Among the most highly debated topics in our NBA discussions are often the arguments of NBA championships and just how much we value them. Many people choose to recognize LeBron James ahead of Kobe Bryant on the all-time list regardless of the fact that Kobe has 5 championships and LeBron has just 3. Bill Russell has 11 championships and Michael Jordan has 6, but it's Michael Jordan who people most often recognize as the greatest player of all time. Some value the championships above all else, while some value it a little, and then there are some that believe championships should have no bearing on how we compare players to one another. For that group of people that do not value the rings, their biggest point and example is this player, the guy this video is about, Robert Ory. If I was to say Michael Jordan is better than LeBron James because Jordan has 6 championships and LeBron has only 3, this group of people will immediately spit out the fact that Ori has 7 championships and of course we wouldn't dare rank him ahead of Jordan. It's a decent point, but it certainly has some flaws. The biggest issue I have with this argument though is the way it's totally put Ori in a bad light over time which he doesn't deserve. Robert Ori deserves all 7 of his NBA championships. He wasn't a superstar, a franchise player, or even an all-star. Ori was simply a quality role player with one of the greatest clutch genes in NBA history. Over time, I've heard people say he was nothing more than a role player, and in some cases, people have just called him lucky. Fellow NBA YouTuber Jimmy Highroller is one of my favorite YouTubers. If you're involved in the NBA community, then you know who this guy is. He has over a million subs and he consistently puts out quality content. With that being said, he made a video on Ori in which he called him the luckiest player in NBA history. I know Jimmy meant no ill intent, but I think this is an extremely disrespectful title to give to Ori. He was certainly lucky to an extent. Ori won two championships with the Rockets in 94 and 95. He won three championships with the Lakers from 2000 to 2002, and he won two championships with the Spurs in 2005 and 2007. That means that during his career, Ori had the fortune of playing with a prime Hakeem Olajuwon, a prime Tim Duncan, and a prime Shaq and a young Kobe. That is definitely a lucky player, but the luckiest player in NBA history? Absolutely not, because that would diminish the impact Ori had on his teams and the instances where he was the difference in whether or not they won the most meaningful games. There are other lucky players who can't say that like Ori can. James Jones has as many championships as LeBron James and he shot only 40% and averaged 5 points for his career. He was never a starter and he also wasn't ever making any game winning shots in the playoffs like Ori was. Jones is a candidate for the luckiest player ever. How about John Sally? The guy won four championships with the likes of Jordan and Pippen, Shaq and Kobe, and Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. He was a 6'11 player who never averaged even six rebounds a game and wasn't hitting game winners either. He's a viable candidate as well. Patrick McCaw ain't anything special and he has three championships in three years played. Heck, even Adam Morrison, who was an absolute bust, played only four seasons in the NBA, but two of those were with Kobe and Powell, so he's a two-time champion. Thanks to an extreme amount of luck and a very short NBA career, this guy has more championships than Dirk Nowitzki and Kevin Garnett. Robert Ory is totally different. For his career, he only averaged 7 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 2 assists, but so much of what he brought to the table goes beyond the stat sheet. He was a smart and savvy player who had length, he was a decent defender, he knew how to take a charge in big moments, he could stretch the floor because you always had to keep an eye on him from 3 point range, and he was quite possibly the most clutch non-superstar in NBA history. This is a list of game winning shots that Big Shot Bob made in the playoffs. In the 1995 Western Finals, if Ori doesn't hit that game winner in Game 1, the Rockets don't steal home court advantage and maybe don't win that long series. In the 2002 West Finals against the Kings, if Ori doesn't hit that buzzer beater, the Lakers go down in the series 3 games to 1 and they definitely don't beat the Kings in 7 games like they did in this reality. In Game 5 of the 2005 Finals, Ori dropped 21 points in the 4th quarter and hit the game winning 3 with 6 seconds left in the game. If he doesn't make that shot, the Pistons close them out in Game 6 and that's yet another championship lost that was a direct correlation to Ori's impact. 
I easily just counted three championships where Robert was the difference between whether or not his team won the championship. That's why it's disrespectful to call this man the luckiest player ever. Again, he wasn't a superstar, he wasn't an all-star, and he wasn't a great playmaker or ball handler, but he knew his role and he knew how to make a big play in the biggest moments, which he did time and time again. So how good was Robert Ori really? Well, he wasn't good enough to be a second or even third scoring option, but with his clutch gene and intangibles, you could argue that he was the ultimate role player, and that's certainly enough to validate his seven rings in my mind. So instead of using Ori as the example of a player with a bunch of rings who doesn't stack up, how about we start picking someone else to be the example who did less to earn their rings?